So 2019. How many people had a great 2019? Lift your hands. Yep. All right. How many people had a not so great 2019? Some of those same hands that go up. You know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's like that. You're like, yeah, I had a great year. And, oh, wait a minute, it wasn't so great either. But you know what? It's, 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 about, uh, it's about counting the blessings. It's about looking back and saying, yeah, maybe it was, it was pretty rough. But no, there were some great things about it. There were some really, really good things that God did in me or God... I saw this happen around me, or I saw this happen in my family, I saw this happen with this person, or we were blessed in this way, and yeah, that part was, yeah, that was pretty rocky, but okay, it's all right, we're uh, counting the blessings, and we're looking at it. You know, the truth is, the truth is we always have good happening, and we always have difficult times happening, and it's, a lot of times it's just a matter of our perspective, and being thankful to God. And just saying, okay, God, you know, I'm going to focus on these good things. Because, you know what? At the end of the day, God is good. At the beginning of every day, God is good. In the middle of the difficult times, God is good. And we can focus on all the difficult stuff. We can look back and say, oh, man, and we can complain. And, but we, let's take a step back and say, no, God is good. And standing on that truth and standing with that perspective helps to shift the way that we see things. And, you know, honestly, sometimes when we have difficult seasons in our lives, that's when we tend to grow the most. Isn't that true? It's really true. Sometimes when we have difficult times that happen, we really, that's the time when we just get a little bit closer to God, when we just draw close to him, when we're a little bit closer to him, a little bit nearer to him, and we're leaning in to him and into his grace. And it's times that can sometimes be the most precious is our times when we're going through difficult times. And, you know, I, you know, we typically think of, you know, Psalms 23, you know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're never alone when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Isn't that right? Because sometimes we think about even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's kind of sometimes how we tend to think of it. Here I am. I am going through the valley of the shadow of death. No, wait a minute. That whole chapter is about a good shepherd. And our good shepherd is right there with us. And if you're going through a difficult time, step a little bit closer to the shepherd. Follow him just a little bit more closely. And maybe things are kind of spooky in the valley of the shadow of death. All right, just get close to the shepherd. Just walk closer to him because he's good. He's a good shepherd. And he, he's leading us into a place on the other side of that valley. Amen? And that's what he has for us. He's got good stuff in store for us. So maybe it was a difficult year. I want to encourage you, be thankful. Be thankful for the growth. Be thankful for those times of intimacy with the Lord. Be thankful for those times because, you know, in Ephes Ephesians chapter 6 talks about standing. You know, it has the whole passage about, about uh, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And we have all the, of the, um, all of the weapons. I mean, we have the, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, and all that. But three times in there it says stand. Stand, stand, stand. And standing is more of a, a perseverance. It's like, I'm going to stand with my God through this. I'm going to stand with my God through this. And when we stand, when we're there, and we go through those things, and when we're, we're faithful to stand, we come out the other side stronger. And so even if it was a difficult time, thank God. God, I'm stronger now. I'm closer to you now. I can, I, we can do this. If you had a great year, praise God for that too. Thank God for that as well. Because God is a good God. Be thankful for his faithfulness, his blessing, and provision. But also, if you had an extremely bad year, well, there's only two more days left. 
We're going into a new year, right? <laughs> so we can say goodbye to 2019, and we can move into 2020 with expectation, because God's got great stuff, new things for us. He wants to grow us. He wants to see us grow and expand. Last week, we talked about a verse uh, from Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, and I mean, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Okay? Let's, can we just leave that up on, the, on the, up on the screen there just for a few minutes? Last week, we talked about forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Now, that word, like we said last week, that forgetting is almost like a, it has the idea of putting something out of your mind. Now, whether 2019 was a great year or it was a crummy year, we don't forget like we, you know, just like we just kind of completely evaporates from our mind and we never ever think about it again. But it's the idea of let's not let these things dominate our minds, whether good, whether bad, but let's put it out of our minds so that we can move towards what is ahead. So we can strain. It says, it says, it says, I, we, are, we are straining towards. So it, it's almost like you're, it has the idea of stretching forwards towards something. If you're hanging on back here, it's really, really difficult to stretch forward and grab a hold of what is ahead. You have to position yourself and shift away from those things and move, strain, stretch towards what is ahead. And that's what I want to kind of encourage all of us today too. Let's put those things aside. Not that we forget, not that we don't learn from what happened, but let's not let those things dominate. Sometimes, it's interesting, sometimes the good things in our past can also hold us back. Isn't that true? Sometimes we think, man, my, I remember way back in, you know, quote unquote, the good old days when things were this way and things were that way. Sometimes we think it was better back then and that's the best it's ever been. If we think that way, it's also going to hold us back because we're still, you know, the past can still dominate what we think. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, the past can dominate. But if we put them out of our minds, we say, okay, look, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to stretch forward. I'm going to grab a hold, like this verse says, I press on toward the goal for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. God has a calling on each one of our lives. Another version says, I'm going to grab a hold of what God has grabbed a hold of me for. And so there's a certain thing that God has for each one of us, and he has grabbed a hold of our lives so that we can grab a hold of what he has for us. Amen? So let's do that in 2020. But I also want to look at a little bit more in, in Philippians chapter 3. I just want to look at this just before we shift a little bit into looking ahead. And Philippians chapter 3 is a really, really excellent chapter. Verse 14 talks about a goal. Okay, there's two things. Can we leave that up, please? Okay, so I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Okay? Now, I'm a sports guy, and I apologize to anybody who's not into sports. Okay? But I'm going to use some sports analogies here this afternoon. Okay? In soccer, okay, how many people enjoy watching the World Cup? Okay? How many people have ever seen... The World Cup trophy. You know, it's about, I don't know how tall it is. It's like this. It's got a soccer ball on the top or whatever. So that's the prize, right? Okay. Just imagine, championship game, two teams. I don't know who's, you know, who was in the last World Cup. Maybe you guys can remind. I'm not so much of a soccer guy, but. Does anybody remember who was in the last World Cup who played for the champion? France and Croatia. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So France and Croatia playing for the World Cup. And the trophy is going to be presented at the end of the game, right? So the trophy is in the building, 
okay? This is the championship. The winner takes all. You win, you get the trophy. Okay, so just imagine, you know, at the sidelines, there's a table, and they set the trophy down, all right? There's a trophy right there. And imagine it's on the sideline, and the players are playing soccer, right? That would be very, very distracting for all of the players. If they're going to play, it's like, whoa, look at that trophy, right? Here we have a prize, which is the trophy, but there's a goal. The soccer players, if they focus on the trophy, they're not going to win the trophy. They have to focus on the goal, which is kicking the ball in the other opponent's goal. That's, that's what their whole job is, to score goals, right? So if they focus on the trophy, they're not going to win the trophy. They focus on the goal, and then they'll win the trophy. So this is what Paul is saying here. He says, I press on towards the goal. There is a goal. And there is a prize. If you focus on the prize, you're not going to get the prize. But if you focus on the goal and pursue the goal, you're going to get the prize. So what is the goal? What is the goal? In order to answer that, we have to go back to chapter 3, verse 7. But if you have your Bibles, please open to chapter 3, verse 7. And I'm going to read it here. Paul says this, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. This was Paul's goal. If you read chapter 2, in Philippians chapter 2, it talks about the greatness of Jesus, how he took the form of a servant and lived as a man, that he'd be given the name that is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Chapter 3 says, I want to know him. He is my goal. I want to know him. Verse 9 continues on to say, And to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share in his sufferings, Becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Jesus was Paul's goal. Everything else like that, okay, yeah, we get the reward, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jesus was Paul's goal, and he's the one that Paul, this is the idea that Paul has for us. That in everything we do, we make Jesus our goal. That we make Jesus our goal. And in 2020, let's commit to that. Where we're going to say, Jesus, you are my goal. You're the one I want to know. You're the one I want communion with. You're the one that I want fellowship with. Whatever it takes, I want to know Jesus more. That is what Paul says. That's the goal. And the prize, sure, we'll get the prize. But if we have the goal, we got everything, right? So that's what, what Paul's talking about here. Forgetting what is behind, those things were good, maybe they weren't so good. We're going to put them out of our mind and pursue Jesus. Stretch ourselves, reach forward, do a little bit more, go a little bit further in order to grab hold of what Jesus has for us. So as we move into 2020, I want to encourage us all, let's be people, let's commit to be people who are stretching ourselves just to go just that little bit further, just to go that little bit further. Let's read in 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, once again we have Paul, and he's talking to Timothy. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. 
Okay, let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 4, verses 7 to 8. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourselves to be godly. Okay? For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. As we are stretching, as we are reaching, there are things that we can do in our Christian life that will stretch us and grow us and help us to become closer to Jesus and reach that goal that we all have. Paul here says that godliness is something to be worked for, something to be strived for, something to be, something to be worked at. It's good to exercise. He said, that's good for our bodies and that's good for this life here. But what if there was something that you could do that would be like exercising and it's good for this life, but also for the life to come as well? What if you could exercise your body and know that you're going to have you know, a great body when you go to heaven? Well, we can't do that, but what if there was something that we could do to work on ourselves, to stretch ourselves that will help us in the life to come as well. Paul says there is. It's godliness. He says physical training, it's of some value. It's not, he's not saying it's not valuable. But a lot of times this is one of the things that we focus on. Focus on, you know, eating right, exercising, doing this and that. Okay, that's good. That's of good, some value. We won't, God has only given us one body. And so we need to be good stewards. I believe that that's part of being a good steward is be, taking care of what God has given us, but there's also something more that can help us in the life to come. And Paul says, so for example, okay, let's just think about the idea of, of exercising, okay? We train our bodies, or we can think of another example. Sometimes we, we want to train our minds. We go to university, we read books, we want to grow in our knowledge, we want to do this and that in order to improve, uh, whether it be in our minds or in our bodies. But there's a couple key points that we do when we know that we want to improve and when we want to grow. First is we do it even when we don't want to do it. How many people ever decided to exercise and they said, every single day you got up and exercised and you're like, I am just so pumped to exercise. Okay, maybe the first couple times, but then the third, you know, second week or third week hits and you're like, I don't want to do this. I'm just so tired. I want to go back to bed. I, you know, there's always that, if you're going jogging, there's always that first step where you just got to up and get going. And sometimes the first step is the hardest step. But we do something even when we don't really feel like we want to do it. We got to go to the, you know, go exercise. Or, you know, maybe it's your, you're trying to uh, learn more. You educate yourself. Okay. Open that book again. Oh, I'm tired of reading. I want to just, you know, flip on YouTube or watch a movie or something like that. No, you discipline yourself to do it. And we do something, we do things even when we don't want to do it. One of the second principles is that we always need to increase. It, we always need to increase when we are exercising or when we're learning something. You don't learn more and more and more by reading the same books over and over and over again. You know, you don't read the same kid's book expecting to learn more. You know, My Little Caterpillar or whatever like that. You don't read that book in order to learn more. You got to go and do the harder stuff so that you can learn more. Okay? The same is true with godliness as well. We want to take a little bit, another, another step, a little bit more, a little bit more, stretch ourselves, strain towards those, those things. And the third, we keep our eyes on the goal. We keep our eyes on the goal. What's the goal? You know, you have a goal in mind. You have an education in mind. You have, you know, sometimes if people are trying to exercise or lose weight or something, they have a certain goal in mind. I want to get to be this many kilos. <laughs> we always keep our goal in mind. So my big question today is, there we go. What is the one thing that you can choose to do this year to stretch yourself to grow in spirituality and in godliness?
What is one thing that you can do? You know, we haven't started a new year yet. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you talk about New Year's resolutions, this or that or whatever. But I want it to be not just a New Year's resolution. You know, New Year's resolutions are all great until the second week of January, right? And then they kind of all go out the window. Okay, I'm not talking about a New Year's resolution. I'm talking about stretching ourselves, being purposeful, and not just allowing life to come to you, but being decisive and making decisions that are going to help your godliness and your, and your spirituality. So what is one thing that you can do this year to challenge yourself to grow spiritually? And, you know, you can start it on January 1st and just continue to do it throughout the year. I would encourage you. We have two more days left in 2019. Pray about it. Just ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what's something a little bit more that I can do? What's something just a little bit more? That stretching, that, you know, it's kind of like putting another weight on the, the barbell or whatever. Just another kilo that you can put on there and stretch yourself just a little bit more to get a little bit stronger. Or reading one more book, you know, in order to improve your education or whatever it is. What is one thing that you can do to grow yourself spiritually? You know, the Holy Spirit has a lot of ideas for us. He's alive and working. Maybe he's talking to you right now about something that you can do, another step that you can take. Maybe it's something like regular church attendance, okay? Maybe some people, you know, you know maybe you, you don't come to church on a regular basis. Well, maybe the Holy Spirit would like you to just come to church every Sunday, okay? Maybe it's something as simple as sitting in the front of, this, of the sanctuary rather than further back, okay? These are steps, practical steps that we can take that will help us to grow in our spirituality. I have a list of some other things that we can, that we have here. We can talk about prayer. We can talk about fasting, reading the Bible. Another one that I've uh, heard a church do once, they, they said they were going to, for one month, they were going to do a negativity fast. So for one month, they're going to do a fast about negativity. Like, wow, I thought that was a great idea. Okay? That's not, I'm not just talking about swear words. I mean, you want to get that out of your, your life for sure. But what, what, would, what would it look like if we all took a fast from negativity? I'm not going to say anything negative about other people or about my situation. I'm going to speak words of faith. I'm going to speak words of life. Wow, that's a cool idea. You know? Thinking the right thoughts. Bible says for us to take our thoughts captive. Sometimes we can struggle with that. We just kind of let our minds go and worries and fears and, you know, imaginations. Oh, no. For this, I'm going to take, in 2020, I'm going to take every thought captive. I'm going to make sure my thoughts line up with the Word of God. And please, please hear me out. I, do, I don't expect anybody to be perfect in any of this. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. But he expects us to try and to grow and to stretch, you know. But these are the things that if we look back at the, the points we talked about as far as exercising, sometimes we do the things that we don't want to do. We train ourselves to do this. So sometimes, let's take, for example, the first one, prayer. I... People exercise when they don't want to exercise. People read and get a better education when they don't really feel like they want to read. Let's say prayer is the same thing. Sometimes we have to pray when we don't feel like praying. The alarm goes off. Uh, let's just uh, turn it off and go back to sleep. Well, no. Let's, uh, let's make decisions. Let's say, okay, God, in 2020, I want to stretch myself. I want to reach that goal. I want to go just a little bit further so that I can grab a hold of what God has for me. And this is not just for today. It's for our future as well. This, what we do today in pursuing godliness, affects our quality of life in heaven. This godliness is good for this life, but it's also good for the life to come. It's an amazing thought to think about, and it's hard to think about because we always... It, it, it's hard to imagine heaven and 
what happens after death and all that stuff. But this is what Paul says. This is good for the life to come. So when you get out of bed and you start praying, even when you don't want to, you think, I'm storing up treasure in heaven. I'm doing something that's going to affect my life in heaven. Okay? Yeah, you do exercise. That's good for here. But what I'm doing for here, for right now, in pursuing godliness, this is going to affect my life in heaven as well. So even things like fasting. I don't like fasting at all. I've, I've, never, I've never enjoyed fasting. I like, the, I like the outcomes of fasting, but I don't like actually uh, fasting. I like to eat. But it's good for godliness. It's good for my life to come. And so it's good for stretching ourselves and growing ourselves and getting closer to the Lord. Reading the Bible, watching our language, thinking the right thoughts, these are all things. And there's multiple more points that we could do, more things that we can do in our, in our walk with God and in our, our, in our godliness. So I would just encourage you in these last couple of days, make it a point of prayer. Say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is it? What's that one thing that you're putting your finger on in my life? Maybe it's the amount of time you spend on Facebook. Okay, that's, that's valid. Okay, maybe it's something, you're replacing Facebook with something else, with reading the Bible. Okay, that's great. But do things that will help you in godliness. Some more practical areas or practical steps. How to achieve goals. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, how to achieve goals. Number one, decide on a goal that will challenge yourself. Do a little bit more than what you're doing already. Don't just read My Little Caterpillar books, okay? Do a little bit more than what you used to do, okay? Do a little bit more than what you're doing already. If you're reading one chapter a day in the Bible, okay, well, consider reading three chapters a day and trying to make it all the way through the Bible in one year, okay? That's just a practical thing. Decide on a goal that will challenge yourself. We don't accomplish anything by just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Okay? Decide on a goal that will challenge yourself for the year. Do a little, more, a little bit more than what you're doing already. Next, please write the goal down. Okay? Write the goal down. If it's not written down, it's just a nice thought. Okay? Write it down. Okay? The Bible says, make the vi write down the vision. Make it clear. Make it plain. Keep it before you. This is what I've done for myself personally. One of my goals for 2019 was to read a book a month. And I read more than I normally do, but I didn't read 12, uh, 12 last year. Uh, but it's my goal for 2020. I'm going to push myself to do a little bit more. And I have already started making a list of the books that I want to read each month and stuff. And so that's one of my goals to push myself just a little bit further. But if we don't write the goal down... It's just a nice thought. It's like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll do it. Maybe you won't. Probably you won't. But write it down and make it plain before you. You know, put it on your phone or, you know, put it on your, you know, your bathroom mirror so you can see it all the time. But make it plain. Okay, yes, this is something that I want to do. Next thing, read your goal and keep track of the days that you do it. Or make it something that's measurable. Uh, some, sometimes when people exercise, they'll, you know, mark down on their calendar the days that they exercised or, or, you know, make it a check mark box where you, you know, I did this many things this day or, you know, I prayed today, I made a check mark. And that way, afterwards, you can go back and you can see the progress that you've made. Okay, so maybe for exa example, your goal was to pray 20 minutes a day. Maybe you don't hit every day in January. Maybe you hit, you know, 21 days. But you can look back and see the progress. Man, I didn't pray every day. But, man, look at this. I prayed 21 of the 31 days in January. That's great. And maybe in February you kind of up that a little bit. You know, instead of 21, maybe you, you're aim for, okay, let's, let's aim for the whole month. And so maybe by the end of the year you're, you're hitting every single day in the month. But keep track of it and make it something that's, measurable. Check marks always work good. Next one, do it with somebody. Tell them about your goals. There's something that comes alive when we speak our goals. 
when we say, this is what I'm going to do. My goal is this. Please help me. I, it's, not that you, it's not that they're going to be a big boss to you and, you know, you know, hit you and flail you if you don't do it. But somebody who can be accountable to you and say, okay, all right, how are you doing with this? And you're already opening yourself up and saying, okay, this is what I want to do. They remind you of your goals when you're feeling discouraged or when you're trying to fall off the path. They remind you, hey, what are you, what, how are you doing in this goal that you told me at the beginning of the year? Say, oh, yeah, yep, ah, I'm not doing so good. Well, you can do it. Come on, get back up. We'll do that. Okay, maybe January you didn't do so well, but let's try and do good in February. Okay? So do it with someone. Tell them about your goals and ask them to keep you accountable. Someone who's like a taskmaster says, all right, Jason, every day, you didn't do it, you didn't do it, and, you know, getting on your case and all that stuff. But someone who you respect, they respect you, and you can walk together through this journey. For me, in reading, it's my sister. Uh, she read, she's told me this year, she read, in 2019, she read like 70-some books. I'm like, man, I can never do that. But someone who's like that, they'll be able to keep me accountable for 12, right? So uh, it, it'll be good. So she'd be a good encouragement for me with that. So these are just some practical things that you can do. Decide on a goal, write it down, read over your goal, and keep track of the days that you do it. And do it with somebody. It's, it's good to do it yourself, but it's, it's more fun when we do it together. Okay? So, the last thing that we want to talk about, some applications, some practical things that we can do. For the first idea is prayer. Now, from, I want to make sure that I get the dates right. Brother Mara, what day are we starting prayer in January? It's the 6th, is that correct? Yeah, but what, what day is it? Is it the 7th? I think it's the 7th to the 19th, right? So we're going to be doing 12 days of prayer in 2020, January 2020, from the 7th to the 19th. So this would be a good way to kind of, if, if your goal is for, if, for prayer, this would be a good way to kind of jumpstart you into the year with prayer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take each day, 12 days, we're going to take, each day we're going to do one month. The 6th, thank you. So it's the 6th to the 19th or the 18th? 6th to the 17th, okay. All right. So we're going to take one day, and each day we're going to pray for the month, uh, one month of 2020. The first day we'll pray for January. Second day we'll pray for, pray for February. Third day we'll pray, pray, pray for March, and so on and all of the events that are happening in those, in those uh, months. And we're just going to pray God's blessing, but it's also a way for you to set aside time at the beginning of the year. It's kind of like fasting the year, saying, God, this year is yours. What I do, what I plan, what I think about, what I prepare for, I want it to be, I want, I want it to be yours. So in everything that we do, we want it to be yours, God. And so that's what we want to do for prayer. And we're also going to be encouraging our church members to fast as well, some, some of those days. If you can fast everything, that's great. If you can just fast, you know, there's different levels of fasting. Maybe you fast Facebook or fa fast uh, TV. Sometimes you fast food. Sometimes you fast, uh, just do like a Daniel fast where you just have fruits and vegetables. All those sorts of things are things that we're going to be doing in order to grow and in order to stretch ourselves, in order to make this year a great year. Uh, another thing would be reading the Bible. We've started a Facebook group. It's called 2020 NLF Bible Reading is what, it's, what it is. Yeah, there it is. There's a picture of it right there. If you want to join, it's free to join. You can join that group. What our goal is for the first three months is to read one chapter a day. Start in Matthew and work our way all through the Gospels. We'll read through the Gospels. There's 89 chapters. We'll be done by the end of March. But this is the way that we can be accountable to each other. And not accountable like you have to do it, but an encouragement in order to encourage ourselves in the things that we want to do. So we're going to start on January 1st with Matthew 1. 
and we'll work our way all through the Gospels. After the Gospels, we'll go on to something else, maybe the Epistles or another book of the Bible. But we are, we'll read, and then we can comment on it. Yeah, I read, or this part, this verse really touched my life. And as we do that, with that interaction, it's going to be something where we can grow together. And so if you want to join that, that one's free to, to join as well. Uh, it's going to, if you, if you do a search for it, uh, we changed the name a little bit so it's easier to search for. 2020 NLF Bible Reading is, is the, the thing to search for. Yeah, God has great things for us in 2020, amen? God has great things for us. Let's be people who don't just sit back. But let's stretch ourselves. Let's be people who are committed to doing that little bit extra. Maybe it's nothing that we've even said here. Maybe it's God's God's asking you to pray for a certain person that you know. Maybe they've been hard towards the gospel. Maybe they said, I don't want anything to do with with Jesus or the gospel or prayer or anything like that. Maybe God's asking you, Make a, make a commitment to pray for this person each day. Or maybe it's something as simple as God's asking you to walk across the street and start talking to your neighbors and friends about the Bible, about Jesus, about the Savior, creator of the universe, one who came to give us new life. Let's be okay with stretching ourselves. In doing exercise and working out and that sort of thing. I've heard people say before, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That means be comfortable doing things that are a little bit more, a little bit uncomfortable for yourself. It's that stretching. That stretching involves pain, usually. We don't like stretching. It's like, okay, I'll just stay right where I am. And that's more comfortable. But let's be people who are say, say, no, stretching is good. We grow through stretching. We grab a hold of what God has for us through stretching. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to get used to that discomfort. And I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to pursue Jesus. I'm going to stretch forward to reach the goal. And in reaching the goal, we receive the reward. In reaching the goal, we receive the reward. And the reward is godliness, blessing in this life and in the life to come. God will lead our ways, you know, as you pray and as you spend time with God. He'll speak to you as you open up the word. He'll tell you. He'll reveal new things to you. And the reward is more intimacy and closeness with Jesus. How many people want to stretch themselves a little bit in 2020? How many people commit to saying, God, I'm going to let you stretch me. I'm going to not even let, not even allow God to stretch you, but make a decision to do it yourself. Okay, sometimes we pray and say, God, I want more of this, I want more of that. But I think sometimes God says, no, you do it. You do it. Read your Bible a little bit more. God expects us to take initiative. God expect, expects us to, to, to do some of these things. Sometimes we need the inner motivation. Sometimes we need this and that. But we can do it ourselves. We don't need to wait for a voice from heaven that says, read your Bible. No. Just read your Bible. Just open it up. Okay? There's so much that God has in store for us for 2020. Amen? God's got a lot for each one of us. Let's be people who are decisive, who say, yes, this is for me. I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to pursue godliness. And we'll see what God brings to us in 2020. Amen? And then at the end of 2020, maybe we can all gather again and say, man, 2020 was an awesome year. It was so great. I'm glad at the beginning of the year I made decisions to do this. I'm, I'm glad I stretched myself just a little bit more because this is the change that I saw in myself. Let's all stand together.
let's just spend two or three minutes in personal prayer. Number one, just ask the Holy Spirit if there is anything that he's encouraging you to do, that he's revealing to you to do that stretching in 2020. And then, number two, make a commitment to God. Say, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this step of stretching. I'm going to take this step of going just a little bit further in 2020 because I want to see godliness in, increase in my life. Let's just spend time in personal prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, God. The Bible says that you are with us and that you never will leave us, never forsake us. We thank you for that. Every moment of our lives, you are with us. There's not been one moment that you have been absent from us. You are not an absentee, Father. But you're with us every moment, oh God. Lord, as we move into the new year, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for 2019. We thank you for what you have brought us through, for the growth, for the blessings, for the revelation of your faithfulness to us. God, and we say you are a good, good God. We say you are a good, good God. And as we move into 2020, God, we move forward with anticipation. But as a anticipation, but also as a stretching forward, reaching forward to grab a hold of it, God. We want, we want to get that, get the goal. We want to hit the goal. So God, as we stretch and as we push ourselves and push each other and, and unite together as a church body, God, we know that we will see a continued outpouring of your faithfulness, God. Lord, we commit 2020 into your hands. God, and we commit ourselves to being people who stretch, who go a little bit further. Because, God, you went further for us. You came from heaven came a little bit further for us and gave yourself, not just a little bit, but you gave everything, God. We praise you. We thank you so much for your faithfulness today, this afternoon, in worship, and in prayer, and in the word, God. We love you. We thank you that you are our Savior and our friend. In Jesus' name we pray.